nowadays the smartphones are really open up the way to really have uh, some kind of a presence and a destination at really cheap. Um, as opposed to TV, for example, really it comes at a bigger cost. The RI might be really bigger, but sometimes uh, broadcasting companies might want control over your content and they might want to decide your strategy. Uh, going independent over mobile, uh, there are always two ways to go mobile. You can go with the telco and lose 50% of your revenues, or you can, especially if they don't provide promotion, or you can basically go um, through, through uh, app stores and create an app and a specific destination for your content. Uh, that has proven very cost effective, especially if you don't pay up a lot to, to develop your destination. Um, so, if I, if I try to compare different platforms, um, it obviously makes sense where, where am I making the most amount of money, where am I reaching the biggest users, and where am I providing the, the best experience. Uh, there are certain platforms, speaking of mobile specifically, there are certain platforms that are able to provide a great experience, which is mainly um, Apple and Android. Uh, today, we're, we're seeing a lot of content being developed, developed specifically for iPhone that supports the Retina display, for example, and that allows for better graphics to show up on the phone. Uh, specifically with the new Samsung, for example, that with an AMOLED screen that also allows for, for better uh, consumption of content. So, yeah, so if, if, if we took out all these factors together and um, be able to uh, look at mobile as a, as a destination, uh, and it's, it's, if it's being really cost effective, I think there's, there's probably going to be a good ROI for, for independent content publishers. So if I can just pick up one piece of there, I mean, we're talking across, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Buddy for you in a second, but we're talking about channels which seem to be quite open, where there is a clear requirement, hunger, opportunity for content, there's clearly to an extent enough content around. But I wanted to ask uh, uh, Mohammed Harib, from, uh, from a content creation perspective, how much truth do you see in the notion that there's a hunger for content and how do you find as a content creator the receptiveness of all these channels and platforms to acquire by content like yours? Well, uh, to be honest with you, we are a, the, the, if I split it to demographics and maybe Mr. Badia can help me here because this is something I, I just acquired by, by experience. The, the demographics are very different. Basically, you have the Emirati uh, basically viewers, you have the Saudi and you have the Kuwaiti, they're very segregated and they don't necessarily watch each other's shows or content. So when I say Arabic content, I'm not saying one content, I'm saying maybe probably seven, eight, I, I'm sure like my show would not be as successful as it would be, you know, in the UAE if I'm showing it in Egypt, for example. Because again, it's, it's content specifically made for a, uh, for a target audience that belongs to that certain country. But there, is, but there is a splash. So basically you'll grab more people and if they buy into, if they like your content, they will basically go uh, beyond uh, what they, they basically learn the language, they learn the dialect. And that's how we are exposed to Egyptian media, for example. I know like how to speak Egyptian uh, a little bit because of the people who work with me and my ex exposure to content. Syrian, same thing. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's, I think, an issue when it comes to advertising and buying media, and uh, and I'm I'm sorry to say we are driven. Arabic content is, and Badia can help me here, is pretty much heavily driven by media buying. So if, if if you have advertisers advertising for your show, then you're guaranteed that you're covering that show's cost from a from a broadcaster perspective, and that does not usually lead to original content. Uh, if something that is successful, for example, like American Idol or any big show and it's been Arabized and that's guaranteed viewers, again, the same thing. So um, if everybody is happy and everybody, you know, the, the media agency is buying, is, is, is paying you and you're offering content, then everybody loves happily ever after. But what happens is basically there is no emergence of new content. Uh, somebody, for example, will release a Turkish soap. Yeah, and I remember, I think NBC did it first time. And then look at the market now. It's saturated with these kind of content. It's, the thing is, the TV stations are not competing against each other to find the most original content. They're looking where the next big thing is. And if somebody brought it, let's say like an NBC, you see it's flooded. Like Abu Dhabi TV is now like, I don't know how much percentage of Abu Dhabi TV is Turkish. Dubai TV, for God's sake, is showing a Korean uh, soap in Arabic, like, and, and that's a little bit, um, it doesn't, 
it's not it, it lowers the bar for Arabic content because you know now that there is a chunk of the budget from the TV station that went to such content and another another chunk of the budget went to that reality show and another chunk went to that TV uh, show that's been Arabized. When you see like a show called Al on X, for example, it, it's the number of people acting there are basically not at the same level or power of these stars, and they don't act, they don't take as much money, uh, as much as, uh, let's say, big guys. And guess what? That's what's working, because now the viewer is more exposed to international production. The same TV station that brings for me Lost and gets for me the Turkish drama, by giving me this kind of content, it's also, and maybe willingly knowing, uh, it's exposing me, the viewer, to a higher level of production. That's why I look back at the Khaliji drama and I go, oh my God, you know, this is not something I, this is not something I communicate with. And this is something that it's, you know, and I don't blame them, blame them because the, let's say the GCC or the old, um, the past Egyptian ones or the Syrian ones are used to this 80s, 70s, 60s styles of everything has to be glorified. I have to sleep and wake up with my makeup on. I have to look beautiful all the time. You know, this is the, the glorified way of, of showing it. But I think when I started, at least there was this one big, huge wall between us, the new creative people, and the TV stations or the establishments. Uh, because there was no mode of communication. You know, they failed to understand us and we failed to understand their needs. Uh, we were aspiring and they were maybe probably uh, not willing to take some risks. But now, as we go on, and I think the TV stations who are first to go on, jump on that bandwagon and notice and know that by taking some risk uh, in, in developing content, even if it fails, trust me, Sony, for example, or Fox or Disney, for every Titanic that is produced, for every Avatar that is produced, there is like 25 hit uh, blockbusters that actually movies that don't make it, that get like a big film for $3 million or $8 million in the box office. So they take risks. Yes, they know that some of them or many of them will fail, but that one will come. And when that one will come, it will recoup that. And we should also let go of the monopoly that we have by media agencies. If we rely as a TV station, and I, in my presentation, inshallah, I have some solutions. If we rely as a TV station on the money only coming from these advertisers, then I'm screwed. Because they'll keep continuing. Like the guy who makes deodorant will decide what kind of show you guys see. Uh, but if I expand, and NBC is doing that with their, uh, let's say, uh, mobile platforms, we can look at licensing, mer merchandising, franchising, then I'm starting to look at different venues for, uh, for, for my content. And I will start to think what kind of content will be suitable, not only for my media uh, buying agency, but for my different platforms. And I think that's something that Fridge managed to do very well. It became a franchise that basically easily adapted on mobile. There is a very extensive merchandising program. Uh, it, it managed to adapt itself to different things. Uh, and I think if we look at creating content that is similar to that kind of uh, strategy, uh, and I think uh, there will be some kind of uh, hope for, for us as for Arabic uh, media content. Justice. Thank you.